And while well, one visit to the holy shrine in Amarnath and many believe all their sins will be washed off and they would be that much closer to attaining salvation. For the pilgrims hoping for a visit this year, the chances seem rather bleak if the government continues its lethargic attitude. Here's more. Devotees from across Karnataka who are eagerly waiting to make a trip to Amarnath have been left in a spot of bother, courtesy the state government. Every year, thousands of devotees apply for the Yamarnath Yatra in Kashmir. The government has, however, prescribed certain rules for these applicants. According to the rules, pilgrims will have to obtain a compulsory health certificate from a recognized government doctor before applying. Even after 21 state governments sent their lists and began the booking process, the Karnataka government is yet to even name the early list of recognized doctors. Applications have been opened to the public through the Sri Amarnath Chi Yatra Shrine Board since March 1st. The website of the board has also put up the list of recognized doctors sent by 21 state governments in which the Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh lists are missing. All of them who are planning to undertake the Yatra have been left clueless. All these state governments, almost 21 state governments have already sent in this list. But, but Karnataka state is, has not yet sent in this list. With the result that people from Karnataka are, are getting, uh, you know, are, are, are being put into a trouble and uh, they are they are uh, they are not getting priority in the booking. The, the 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 importance of this is that because in the in the initial days of the yatra, uh, the, the uh, there won't be any rain, and so so people who go later in the yatra will not be able to see the lingam totally, and also also they they'll have to face a lot of rain and other problems. So. So um, I, th I think this is a real problem. I would request the government to, so to, to do something about. The worrying fact for several of these devotees is the fact that this kind of delay would hamper other procedures for registration as well. Once the compulsory health certificate is obtained, devotees have to go through another long process before they can finally get the green signal for the Yatra. While the Amarnath Ji Yatra 2014 commences on 28 June, and concludes on 10th of August, a delay in registration will only adversely affect the pilgrims. Kota is per, per day 7,500 yatris. So it's, it's seen that seen that already from March 1st the booking has started. So from March 1st to March 17th, if you say, so already so many, so there's a delay from 28th to, uh, to July, so June 28th to July 15th. So, so so many days the the people from Karnataka have already lost their priority and it's seen that from July 15th onwards July, July the, the rain start and uh, people from Karnataka are, are already being put into it uh, inconvenience when we contacted the health and family welfare department this is what they had to say because we got the message to send the list of the doctors uh, in uh, only on 14th okay uh, so definitely as early as possible we'll submit the list because uh, routinely we have to get the message message from the government uh, to give the list of the doctors who are enrolled in the uh, medical board uh, to for the uh, pilgrims for the health checker yeah, because only the because of some superannuation and uh, during the transfer period some of the doctors who have en who have been enrolled last year they will not be there in the present list mm. so we have to make a replacement for that mm. and it will be done by tomorrow and uh, we'll submit it like the usual diplomatic answer they claim it will be done in the coming two days but what we ask is why do pilgrims from Karnataka have to be the last ones to be enrolling for the Yatra? What about the difficulties they have to undergo due to the delay? Why was the announcement of this list not even on the schedule until we contacted them? Deepak Bopanna, News 9, Bengaluru. And while a shocking murder has come to light in Bengaluru, a man was stabbed to death with lethal weapons late last night when he was walking down the street. The incident took place at the Maria Panapalia at 10 p.m., where 25-year-old Suresh was brutally killed. He was a resident of Prakash Nagar. Suresh bled to death as he had suffered severe head injuries. The reason behind the murder is said to be a love story. Suresh is said to have fallen in love with a girl, but... Her parents learned about it and got her engaged to another man last week. But this did not bring an end to their love story and they kept meeting each other often, which irked the girl's family. The cops have taken the girl's family members into custody as they suspect that they might have murdered him. 
a shocking and a gory murder coming to light uh, from uh, Bengaluru. Last night, one Suresh was stabbed to death at Mariapanapalia. Suresh was merely walking back home to Prakashnagar when the incident took place. It is said that a love affair could have claimed his life as the girl's family was not happy with the relationship. The girl's family had even forced the girl to get engaged to another man, but this had not stopped the relationship between the girl and Suresh. Well, hospitals are responsible for saving lives and providing excellent health care facilities for the community. But a hospital in Hubli quite doesn't follow this norm. This is the famous Chittagupi Hospital, or should we say, the infamous Chittagupi Hospital that comes under the Hubli Dharwad municipality. Established in 1962, the hospital receives equal grants from the Hubli Dharwad municipality and the government. The hospital provides 22 specialties and doctors and all the specialties were hired during its inception. Since then, the hospital has faced acute shortage of doctors. Patients are put to hardship since there is a glaring shortage of doctors. Even pregnant women are left to suffer. <laughs> Despite shortage, the hospital is known for its excellent treatment given to pregnant women. It is also known for its postpartum care. This is the only reason why people from far off come to this hospital. The hospital also has several schemes for pregnant women to ensure that they don't face any problem during pregnancy. These schemes also take care of the hospital expenditure. Of late, pregnant women have been facing difficulties since the hospital has only two obstetricians. The two have assigned Tuesday and Friday as the day for consultation and these two days see more than 200 patients coming for consultation. Pregnant women from far come in the hope to meet the doctor but have returned home disappointed since accommodating 200 patients in a single day is difficult even for the doctors. The two obstetricians also conduct close to 20 deliveries in a day apart from the numerous abortions. Despite having placed demands numerous times, none of the responsible authorities have come to the rescue. <laughs> Adrally Hatambat Nura Arvat Theodorly sanction Adanta postally in the Pathair post to sanction Agate. Adrally fifty per cent of the doctors government in the Barbaku, fifty per cent corporation in the appointment Abaku. Egan Prestitelli, government doctors Kavala Idre Dure, Amele Baliki in the Koda, Ogre Doctor Dure. It is truly appalling to see hospitals in such a state. With just two obstetricians and no doctors in several departments, the hospital has managed to treat patients for over five decades. One can only imagine what the hospital could have done with the entire staff in place. Prakash Nulvi, News 9, Hubli. And while the Maleshwaram police has got a BESCOM shocker, BESCOM raids have revealed that the police station is drawing electricity from a subsidized connection. Maleshwaram police station officials are in a dilemma. They have been slapped with a case by BESCOM. They have alleged that the police station has taken wrong connection, which is subsidized by the government. The police station is supposed to be taking a connection which falls under LT3. This is a connection meant for small-scale industries and is highly subsidized by the government. The subsidized connection is Rs 2.75 less compared to the commercial unit price. This was discovered after BESCOM conducted raids on the station on the 15th of this month. The police have also reacted to BESCOM's charges. 
the issue regarding the electricity bills in Malleshwaram station has come to my notice. However, Bescom has not sent a notice regarding the matter to us yet. Once I get the notice, I will look into the matter. According to the information I have received, the station has been having this connection for the past 40 years. Once the notice comes from Bescom, I will address the matter. Bescom is also planning to raid other police stations where they suspect that they are drawing power from subsidized connections. Bescom has registered a complaint with the Vigilance Department in Jayanagar. The electricity supply company is planning to account the areas in the bills and then book the police station. Anand Burli, News 9, Bengaluru. And well, there are many methods motivational speakers use to improve their personality of the subjects. Meet Priya Kumar, who will make you walk on fire to shape your personality. Today, people need all kinds of motivation to live life. There are many motivators who use various methods to motivate people. But when you meet Priya Kumar and understand her methods, you might start sweating. Life is the best teacher, experience is the best teacher. Therefore, I put in activities such as walking on fire, bending construction rods with your neck, etc. Activities which you participate in, which you think, oh my God, I can't do this or I'm going to be terribly hurt doing this. And then you do it with no ease and then you question, what was I thinking? Why was I holding myself back? Priya Kumar has been a motivational speaker for the past 15 years and believes in making her subjects walk on fire. Yes, this strange method might be dangerous in nature, but Priya believes that it helps a person to strengthen the mind and overcome fear. I know, I, I think uh, in the initial five minutes, they question my sanity a little bit, then they question who got me there, but then after five minutes, I think they are a game that bring it on, let's do it. Priya states that the people whom she motivates by making them walk on fire often panic but finish the task successfully, eventually giving them great confidence. I started my career with lecture style training. You know, the regular death by PPT and so on, the talk. It doesn't work, you know. The feedback I would get later is that it doesn't really work. I've been doing the fire walk, etc. for the past nine years. And even when I meet somebody who attended my first ever workshop, they say they still remember it. And, you know, I get emails sometimes for people who attended my workshops five years ago that they still, it, it still sticks with them, you know. It did something for them, so it works. It worked for me. Priya has been successful in making celebrities like Vijay and actor Ranvijay Singh walk on fire and also featured in Rakika Swayamvar making the contestants perform this fire act. Priya has also been an author for the past five years and writes about people who have the fire in them to reach their goals. Her latest biography on the chairman of Hero Cycles, Mr. O.P. Munjal, has been widely acclaimed and she says the man has a silent fire in him which motivated her to write about his life. There are people who've made it big. There are people who are at aspirational places. But this man touches your heart. He touches your soul. So as much as this ba uh, book is uh, a factual, it's also very biased, I would say. You know, so th that is where uh, I would differ from a journalist because I also put in a lot of my opinions in it. Well, if you're bored of attending the usual motivational sessions of personality development, then probably it's time you try some fiery methods with Priya Kumar. Vivek Vinayak, News 9.